In this video, I'm going to be introducing you to something called configuration space, which we can use to help us solve the path planning problem. Now, when we plan an operation for our robot, such as, say, pick and place operation, we're generally planning this task in the Cartesian space or the XYZ space. The reason why we're planning our motions in the XYZ space is because this is the physical space where we know the location of objects. In other words, we may know the location of the object we need to pick up and the location of the object or the location where we need to drop off that object in the XYZ physical space. However, our robot does not directly operate in the XYZ space. If our robot is uh, an articulated manipulator, this manipulator has three revolute joints and it doesn't directly operate in the XYZ space. Instead, it operates in the theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 space. We talked extensively about this difference when we were learning about forward and inverse kinematics, where we learned how to transform points, uh, locations of the end effector between XYZ space and theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 space in order to position the end effector. Here, I'm going to expand on that concept a little bit by drawing a new coordinate frame that is not an XYZ coordinate frame, but is actually a theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 coordinate frame. However, it'll look very similar to my XYZ frame. So I'll make this axis be theta 1, this axis be theta 2, and this axis will be theta 3. Every point in XYZ space has at least one point on the theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 space that it corresponds to. When we transform a point from theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 space to XYZ space, when we transform points this way, we're doing forward kinematics. And when we transform points the other way, from XYZ space to theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 space, we're doing inverse kinematics. I'm now going to give this theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 space a name, and it will be called configuration space. I'm going to draw these two axes, these two spaces, right next to each other so that we can look at them together and do some comparisons and some transformations. Way back in the beginning of Robotics 1, we learned about a concept called workspace. We learned that the workspace is all of the areas in XYZ space that the robot can reach. We can also express workspace in our configuration space. Let me show you an example of that. Let's suppose that we have a one degree of freedom robot. It consists of only one link. This link is pinned right here in the center and the end effector is over here. We can draw the workspace of this robot in the XYZ Cartesian frame and in that case it looks like a circle in the XY plane. Here's the workspace of this one degree of freedom manipulator in the XYZ Cartesian space. This is a circle lying flat in the XY plane. 
I can also draw the workspace in my Cartesian space. In this case, theta 1 is this angle right here. And that angle can vary between 0 and 360 degrees. So my workspace in the Cartesian space, or I'm sorry, in the uh, configuration space, would look like this, where this value down here is 0, and the one at the top is 360 degrees. In both cases, the workspace is one-dimensional. But in the Cartesian space, I had to draw it in a two-dimensional plane. While in the configuration space, it only required one axis. Let's look at another example. Let's suppose that we have a two degree of freedom planar manipulator. Here I've shown a two degree of freedom planar manipulator. In this drawing, I'm using this axis to be x and this axis to be y, just like I did in the one degree of freedom manipulator. Here, the first link is pinned to the ground, and the second link is pinned to the first link. The end effector is over here, and now I have two angles, a theta 1 and a theta 2. Figuring out the workspace for this manipulator in XYZ Cartesian space is a little bit complicated. I have to imagine the full rotation of the first joint combined with the full rotation of the second joint and picture in my head what kind of a space that will create in my XYZ space. I can see that in this case the full range of positions that the end effector can reach will make a kind of a uh, disk like this, where the space that the end effector can reach is in this um, slashed space. This entire disk is lying flat in the xy plane. So if we looked at this workspace from the top view, it would look like this. Here's x, here's y, and the workspace is I draw a circle here and I draw a circle here and the workspace is in between. In order to figure this out it takes a little bit of uh, imagination on my part and the more complex this manipulator becomes the more difficult it is to figure out what the workspace is in the XYZ Cartesian space. However, in the theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 configuration space, figuring out the workspace is much simpler. All I have to do to figure out the workspace in configuration space is to identify the range of values that each of these joints can make and then I take the intersection of those areas. So in this case, theta 1 can be anything from 0 to 360 degrees. So I'll identify that space here. It's between these two lines where this is 0 and this is 360. Theta 2 can also range between 0 and 360 degrees. So I identify 0 and 360 on my theta 2 axis. And the total workspace is the intersection of these areas. So everything that is between both 0 and 360 for theta 1 and 0 and 360 for theta 2, that's my workspace. As the number of degrees of freedom in my manipulator becomes higher, finding the workspace in configuration space continues to be fairly simplistic. All we have to do is identify the range of 
angles, or if we have a prismatic joint, the range of displacement for each joint angle, and then we identify the intersection of each of those ranges, and that complete intersection area is the workspace in configuration space. So we can see from these examples that finding configure or workspace in configuration space is much easier than finding it in Cartesian space. We can use this little trick to plan our motions, that is, do our path planning, in whichever space it's easier to do it in, and then simply convert from one to the other. Remember that we already know how to do conversions between one space and the other. If we want to convert from Cartesian space to configuration space, we have to do inverse kinematics. And if we want to move from configuration space to Cartesian space, we do forward kinematics. In the next video, we're going to see how we can do path planning by planning our path first in Cartesian space while we find the workspace in configuration space where it's easy. Then we can convert the path that we've planned from Cartesian space to configuration space in order to verify that our path does not leave the workspace and also in order to allow us to very easily follow that path.